My name is Edie Miller Ellis, and I am a professor of clinical ophthalmology and director of glaucoma at the Shea Eye Institute at the University of Pennsylvania uh, Perlman School of Medicine. And I'm Mildred Olivier, and I am professor of surgery in ophthalmology at the Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science, Chicago Medical School, and uh, I do glaucoma at uh, Cook County Hospital as well. Um, and we attend a lot of meetings together, do a lot of projects together. My first one in ophthalmology meeting was maybe about eight years ago. One of my uh, friends, a glaucoma specialist, Ann Coleman, was president that year, and she's like, you really should come to Women in Ophthalmology. And I had never been to a meeting, even though I was a member. And I went that first time, I remember it was in Park City, Utah, and I've been every year since. I thought it was the most empowering, positive meeting. It's all about mentorship and networking. And also, uh, most importantly, I think for me, is really about uh, bringing women into leadership positions and uh, learning what, um, you know, how we can make it easier for some women in some countries which still have uh, great uh, difficulty in perhaps uh, doing what they love, their passion. Mm -hmm. And also, I think women here, <laughs> because oftentimes we're still, we have a thing now uh, from the pathway to the podium because we want to see more women, but we'd like to see more women on stage presenting uh, their scientific projects, being part of leadership. The other great thing about women ophthalmology is that we do have this symposium. There is mm -hmm. a scientific aspect to it. And so for people who are um, younger in the process and trying to break in, it gives them an opportunity to be able to present in with a different audience and also gain experience so that when the bigger organization calls you, you're ready. You know, you've been sort of... Um, planning all along and getting better and zoning on your skills. We have Marshila Devan that comes and she does a, a communication speaker training and uh, it gives a lot of people confidence to be able to go in a larger group uh, before you get to the big stage. It's important for women to have a platform and uh, sometimes it's just nice if you have as some similar problems to just talk to women about them. So. Sometimes it's childbearing and when it might be the best time. Sometimes it's how do you go from an assistant to an associate or to a professor, you know, what you have to do, and that's different at many academic centers. Um, I'm also interested in diversity issues, and sometimes it's how do you just bring more diversity and perspectives into a place where the culture isn't that way. Our meetings are also about bringing family together. So you're not really leaving your spouse or your kids at home. We actually encourage you to come with your kids and we have uh, social activities that you can do with your family. And it's always in the summertime uh, for that reason. So uh, it's a different kind of a meeting. I initially got, my parents are both from Haiti, I should say that. And so I was going to Haiti when I was a little girl and we would go on vacation there. I got into ophthalmology and I was at Harlem Hospital when John Mitchell actually had been going to Haiti and asked me to go to Haiti. And uh, once I finished my fellowship in glaucoma, I said that I would. So I've been going to Haiti now since 1993. Somebody had asked me about my work there, and they had written an article, and so I started going to the north. I would always go to Port-au-Prince before, and then I started going to the north in Cape Haitian, uh, up until, of course, the earthquake that was mm -hmm. about four years ago. And once the earthquake occurred, I went back to Port-au-Prince I'd always been involved. I'd gone there to teach different laser techniques or surgical techniques. But uh, once the um, earthquake occurred, then the American Academy of Ophthalmology put together a Haiti task force, and we sort of asked the Haitian ophthalmologist of how we could best help them. Initially, it was you could imagine somebody who might have had glasses and they lost their glasses, they couldn't really see, or they're presbyopic. Um, there was a lot of trauma, um, and so they just needed basic, like a direct ophthalmoscope indirect um, drops, antibiotics, things like that. And as time has evolved, uh, we then started to set up an actual center that we could hopefully have the um, AAO volunteers, AGS volunteers, 
go down and try to do skills transfer. All that stuff is really in place now and it's the next step we'll really try to bring on people who wanted to volunteer to go down on a regular basis to really do more skills transfer um, to the Haitian ophthalmologist. One thing that I can certainly say is that every time I go I am always amazed at how the people themselves are so appreciative of uh, the work that's being done and you know however small or big that is. Particularly for glaucoma because there's such a huge glaucoma problem and patients are much younger, it's much more aggressive and we don't really have things like medications that we can give for long term so we really have to figure out um, what we can do there but I assume that it's many of the challenges that are in other you know parts of the world and some who have done better than others so I continue to go it's challenging but uh, it certainly is uh, I get a lot more out of it probably than they do when I go there.